connection. And I am supercharged up to uh, introduce our panel of presenters today who all represent volunteer ride programs um, in the Mid-Atlantic. But uh, this is an exciting movement uh, where we can leverage volunteer opportunities for people to support older adults, but also where we can um, uh, support our, old, our, our seniors by providing volunteer rides. So I'd like to welcome our panel uh, to the stage at this time. And um, we can get to know each of you a little bit better. Um, and then we're going to dive into the individual programs that you represent and the national movement of volunteer rides. So uh, it's kind of random. Every time we uh, people land on the screen, it's they land in a different configuration. So I'm just going to go to my my left, at least as I'm looking at the screen, and let's get to know Retta a little bit better first, and then and what program she represents, and then we will meet everybody on the screen, and then we will dive into your programs. Uh, I want to remind our audience. At any point in time, you can ask a question, make a comment, use the Q&A box or raise your hand. We we love it when these are lively and interactive discussions. So, Retta, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, good af afternoon, everyone. I'm Retta Vinson, and I'm uh, the marketing specialist for JCA, Jewish Council for the Aging's Village Rides Program. And uh, I work in partnership with uh, uh, Christina Obando, my partner in crime, our coordinator for the program, and we serve uh, 15 organizations, uh, villages and community organizations that are participating in the Village Rise program in Montgomery and Prince George's County. Memory. Great. Okay. And and Christina, it's it's great that you're right below Retta on the screen because she uh, teed it up perfectly for you. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, yes. I am Christina Obando. I am, of course, Retta's counterpart with the Village Rides program. Um, I'm really behind the scenes, just helping navigate uh, our platform, which really makes volunteering just so easy. Excellent. And then below uh, Christina, we've got uh, Emily. Emily, tell us a little bit about yourself and the role that you play. Yes, I'm the manager of Envy Rides. We have 15 partners in the Northern Virginia area, and we serve Fairfax, Loudoun, Prince William, and Arlington counties. Excellent. And last but not least, we've got Colleen. And uh, I'm not even going to take a crack at uh, saying your last name, Colleen. And I didn't do that for anybody. But uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and your role. Uh, I'm Colleen Constanzer. It's not as bad as it looks as far as the last name goes. And I'm with Neighbor Ride. We are a volunteer-based organization in Howard County. Uh, we serve Howard County residents um, age 65 and older. And I can't wait to tell you a little bit more about us. Excellent. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really excited to dive in to each of your programs. Each is very unique and each represent a different geographic region in the Mid-Atlantic. And, but... Before we kind of dive into those programs and dive into the Mid-Atlantic, because our audience has expanded, you know, nationwide and sometimes even worldwide on these discussions, let's sort of take a big picture look at um, volunteer ride programs, which are relatively new. But uh, one, let me share my screen and uh, one resource, if you're out there, is the um, the uh, Transportation Association of America, and they've got the um, the National Volunteer Transportation Center, and they've got this on their website here at ctaa.org. There's this amazing map of volunteer ride programs all over the the, the nation, and as you can see. This is a, a pretty crowded map here. Um, would would anybody would anyone like to Colleen? I think you've you had some comments you wanted to share about this organization um, and and the resources they provide. 
Yeah, we, uh, Neighbor Ride was founded in 2004, but for three years leading up to then, um, we had work groups really digging into some of the programs that were offered across the country to really kind of come pull, pull best practices from anywhere we could find them. And this was a great resource. Um, back then it was under Beverly Foundation and you'll see that they were one of the founders, but that map that you showed is a fantastic resource because you can really kind of get a flavor for how different programs are operating across the country based on their community demographics, whether it's very rural, very urban, et cetera. Um, so that's a wonderful resource. And you'll also see they have, if you kind of scroll down on their site, if, if folks have it up, they have a great volunteer handbook um, and just a lot of really good resources to kind of get you started. Great, I am gonna make sure to drop that address into the mat, into the chat there for folks to uh, tap into. And then, you know, when I think about volunteer rides, uh, I think about this program that was founded in Maine. And let me see if I can share my screen and share their website. It's called ITN America. And I'm not sure how, if, if many of you in the audience are familiar with this program, but it's got a, a really interesting backstory to it. And they also, I think, inspired a lot of programs to uh, be launched. And they they actually have a network of um, ITN specific uh, organizations, as you can see on the screen. But um, Emily did, and Colleen, I, I think you two have some information on ITN and maybe just sharing their story because it really is kind of inspirational. Yeah, ITN is uh, kind of the originator of this concept nationwide and it started by Catherine Freund out of Portland, Maine. And she was um, help, trying to help her mother age in place. Her mother had some vision issues, medical issues, and she was looking for a way to get her rides. And she started this program where you trade in your car when you can no longer drive for credits with a ride system and it was volunteer rides. So she had older people who could no longer drive trade in their car, is now expanded. They have nine affiliates in the country. They do have their own proprietary software and you'll hear more, some of our partners have their own software too. Um, but she's just kind of the pioneer in this movement and she has an editorial in the Boston Globe actually about this, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, um, I had the opportunity to hear her speak when I was at uh, the UMBC Erickson School of Aging Studies and um, was just blown away at her story. And one, one interesting thing, she started this before Uber and Lyft, um, before those were options. So the only option that you had as an older adult was using public transportation or calling a cab. And one thing that she discovered in her preliminary launch research, and oh, actually I, I believe she pioneered this because her son was either killed or injured by an older adult driver. And instead of, you know, harboring resentment or whatever, she recognized that there was this problem of older adults that they tied independence to them getting in their car and driving and how challenging it was to get rides. And so that's one of the, the stories I remember. But the other thing that she, I remember her saying was, is, is that, you know, there was cab voucher programs that were out then. And what she found was, is that older adults didn't really want like a, a marked car coming to their driveway, like a cab, giving them a ride. Whereas if a, a, a volunteer showed up, it was like a friend was giving them a ride. And that sort of optic was, easier and I, and I think we all sort of see this now with uber and lyft is is that it doesn't really look like we're getting a cab it's like our friend is picking us up you know um so anyways okay so so that sort of sets the table for uh the globally you, you know this volunteer ride movement and i'll also drop in a uh a reference to last week's discussion with the Shepherd Center, another global organization that's supporting volunteer rides. But let's dive in now and learn more about these the the local programs. And um, I tell you what, Emily, since 
I, I, I'm going to credit you with bringing this topic to the table and making this webinar uh, happen. So, Emily, why don't we start with your um, with your program and uh, tell us a little bit about it, and uh, and then we'll learn about the others. Yeah, great. Thanks, Steve. Um, I manage Envy Rides. We have 15 partners in Northern Virginia, and they're very diverse from shepherd centers, mosques, synagogues. We have some community centers, um, and we are all volunteer rides, volunteer drivers. We are not means tested, so we're completely free for anybody who rides with us. Um, each partner may have their own qualifications to get rides from them, but we're, the one thing that unites us is we don't charge riders and all of our drivers are volunteers. Our network is vast. We cover all of the Northern Virginia area and we can take people across county lines, medical appointments. Um, our partners have different rules, but can be medical, social, shopping, errands. During the pandemic, we've seen a big increase in errands. So um, we're diverse and we get people around Northern Virginia. Now, uh, sort of define the partner relationship. So. Do people call Envy Rides directly or do they call the partner and then how, how does all that work? Yeah, it's a great question. And the answer is both and everything. So we can take the calls and we can kind of get people to a partner that drives them. We also, people who have established relationships with partners like a Shepherd Center may call the Shepherd Center directly. Um, we also have an email address I can drop in the chat where we can take information and kind of triage the, the call to where it should go. Great, excellent. All right, well, we'll definitely come back to you and and uh, feel free to jump in to kind of, if any of the other panelists say, um, uh, have any uh, comments or questions. So now let's, uh, let's, let's go to the village rides next. Um, and ironically, I just did a, uh, um, helped the Village to Village Network with their 20th anniversary celebration. Um, it's been 20 years since Beacon Hill Village founded. So before that, no one even knew what a village was or they thought about the village people and, the, and you know, YMCA song or whatever. But um, the villages are now uh, a very instrumental part of the aging services fabric. And I believe the Village Rides program is one that supports them. Is, is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Um, if I may uh, jump, jump in. Yeah, Village Rides has been around since 2014. And um, the partners that we have, um, several of the villages, you know, have, have really grown uh, to be quite, quite large. And they have wonderful programs in addition to the rides that they provide. Um, and we assist and and Christina can attest to uh, the, the the software, which is one of the things that she's really uh, astute at training people <laughs> how to use uh, the software program. Um, and our my my role is more helping with the, the villages as they are you know doing recruitment, providing marketing materials that are free. Um, providing uh, things such as commercials to just build awareness of the programs. And uh, of course, when we get uh, leads, we refer them, uh, as Emily was saying, to our, our partners that cover the zip codes and where, they, where the ride is needed. Um, would it be helpful? You had shared with me, it's, it's only a 30 second uh, video, but it would be, would it be helpful if I, um, Share sure, that please. with our audience. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's a commercial that we've run in Prince George's and in, in Montgomery County. Okay. So let me keep my fingers crossed that this all works out. Okay. And here we go. Volunteer drivers are everyday superheroes. JCA Village Rides volunteer drivers help prevent seniors and adults with disabilities from feeling totally isolated and are trained to follow COVID-19 safety protocols. Volunteers help neighbors who are seniors that can no longer drive themselves to the doctor or grocery store. Be a good neighbor. Volunteer to help seniors in Maryland. Join Village Rides community organization in Montgomery and Prince George's counties. Call 301-255-4212 or visit online. Give the gift of Whoops, great. That's really nice. Uh, and uh, probably uh, 
it, it's it's great to have these 30 second uh commercials because they're so well thought out and they describe exactly what what you do you know i've often thought that the village rides program was brilliant because um not only are you supporting rides for the village members which it's top on their list of services that they all provide but somebody who's not a member of a village if they learned about your program and they called you up now they could be introduced to a village in Montgomery County, Maryland. Absolutely, uh, Montgomery County, and also we have four um, partnering organizations in Prince George's County, and oh. we're we're really uh, we're really proud to to have helped to start uh, as they are villages are just starting the volunteer transportation programs. Christina and I will you know assist them in Excellent. doing that. Um, Christina, any comments that you'd like to make about the Village Rides program? Absolutely. I really love that in partnering with us, Jewish Council for the Aging, the Village Rides program, um, having, you know, Retta and myself really supporting them, uh, they have access to a variety of different support services that we offer, and it's all completely free, which is the most amazing part. And as I mentioned earlier, it's all about helping volunteers how to just really maximize their time, make it as effortless as possible, and just streamline that communication. Um, so our, you know, our online platform that really does all the communicating and tracking for them, it's just a fabulous tool, completely user friendly. And um, also, I do do training for the new volunteer drivers who come on board just so they can know exactly what it is they're signing up for. I saw a question pop up earlier if these uh, volunteers are vetted. Yes, they are. Uh, we do volunteer, I mean, we do criminal and MBA background checks. So all of our volunteers are indeed checked. You know, each village does their own kind of search, making sure, or, or review, should I say, to ensure that they are indeed, you know, eligible drivers, safe drivers to put out into the community and trust. But um, it's a wonderful community program. So many friendships flourish, and I love to be part of this. It's it's just an amazing movement. Excellent. All right. Well, and and I'm going to circle back to to you, Emily, on how you you vet your programs. But Colleen, uh, tell us a little bit about the neighbor ride program and what that's all about in the region that you serve and, and what have you. Yeah, Neighbor Ride is based in Howard County. We're a largely volunteer-based organization and started out with about 20 volunteers on board and now we're up to about 400. Um, our volunteers not only provide the rides, but they operate our call center. So as we speak behind me, I've got several volunteers taking the calls from our, our drivers. We provide transportation for everything from medical and shopping to social outings, taking people to faith services. Um, one of my favorites is when we take someone and one of our volunteers delivers someone to go volunteer themselves. Um, it's really for us all about keeping people connected. And um, we sometimes kind of say we give them the wheels to keep being their awesome selves, you know, so that they can keep doing what, what gives their life or fills their lives with joy. Um, we too do the background checks. Um, we do the criminal background, driving history, background checks, and also check our references. Um, we're a little bit different than um, some of the other programs in that for some people, we do charge modest fees. Um, we have, we, we started that from the get-go. Um, that was kind of our way of creating a, a source of matching funds at the very beginning. Um, again, they're very modest, you know, maybe, maybe a sixth of what like an Uber ride would cost. Um, but then we do have several additional subsidies in place. So we have a good neighbor fund for folks who um, are income eligible and they ride at no cost. We have veteran subsidies available um, thanks to the Tower Cares Foundation, um, as well as actually from the ITN network, we have Rides in Sight um, funding that allows us to subsidize uh, transportation for vision related purposes. Great. That, that's fantastic. And let's before I, the, we got a long list of questions. So the, I, this audience never fails. It's, you guys are asking some amazing questions here, but I want to give Chris, uh, Emily the opportunity to talk about the background checks and, and how your program uh, participants are vetted. 
Yeah, we're also funded by Jewish Council for Aging. So we're just like Bill and Rides. We do a background check. Um, and then we also collect, I think somebody asked about driver's license and insurance and we do verify that. Some of our partners um, check references too, like Colleen mentioned. Each okay. partner has their own vetting process. A excellent. And um, and uh, yeah, and, and Colleen, it was, it was interesting to hear about you um, charging for some drivers and what have you, you know, the, the, the really, the really cool thing last, last uh, week, we had the shepherd centers on a discussion and the shepherd center are, are largely uh, a free service as well. You supported by volunteers, matching individuals with volunteers. But I recently had the opportunity to look at a shepherd center annual report and I was blown away at the amount of donations that were given to the program and they've shared that oftentimes the participants who are getting free rides or free support um yes it's free but because they're delivering such an amazing service um it's a great source of funding and donations to the programs and i have no doubt that that all of you on the screen have been the recipient of some amazing donations from program participants and their families. Um, okay, let's uh, let's let's dive into some of these things here. Um, Deb Merrimer asks, uh, do your affiliate organizations off, offer door through door help or just to drop off and pick up services? Yeah, so like if somebody is going to a doctor's appointment, will the volunteers wait in the waiting room for them to be done? How, do, how does that work? At least for <laughs> uh, okay. Well, at least for Village Rides, I mean, we do have 15 different partners, and they all operate completely differently. So it's kind of a tough question to answer to give a straight yes or no. But um, the, I guess the primary answer is it's really all about the volunteer. Uh, we love our volunteers. We want to make sure that they're comfortable, and we want them to continue to volunteer and continue to provide great service. So if they're willing, definitely, we always encourage them. Uh, but if not, you know, at the curb, sidewalk, driveway, that's that's where they're, you know, agreeing to meet and to drop off, whatever the case is. Now, I do have some villages that do. Um, maybe if there's a special need or something of that nature, they will put in the note section, uh, please go inside, you know, drop off the person at the medical office or whatever the case is. But um really for round trip situations riders usually have that phone number and then just give the volunteer a call and say hey i've completed my appointment i'm ready to be picked up so it's yeah. it, again very very streamlined simple to kind of maneuver mm -hmm. um do any of the other uh village rides or um envy rides do you, do you all how do you all handle requests like that if somebody wanted somebody waiting for them we, we at Neighbor Ride, we schedule the, the start and finish of a ride. When someone calls, they say, I, I, maybe it's a doctor's appointment at 10, and we schedule a return trip time. That being said, um, you know, if, something, if someone gets out early or they're running late, they call our office, and we try to make the adjustment. But our rides are typically door-to-door, -door, um, so we may walk up and greet someone at the door or assist them getting down steps um, and, and then drop them at whether it's the grocery store or the doctor's office. One of the exceptions is we added a few years ago, um, just because we saw the need, um, assisted shopping rides. So some folks, again, still we pick them up and drop them off at the grocery store, but we saw that some folks were having trouble managing packages, et cetera. So that's the exception where we go in and maybe we help them out if that's, if that's part of the request. Holy cow. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because something it's a good uh, a reminder. I forget what conversation it was where we were talking about nutrition with older adults. And one of the ideas was to weave a nutritionist into a ride program because people are going on rides to the grocery store. Wouldn't it be kind of a cool service to offer? where when somebody requested that they're going grocery shopping to say, hey, at some point, would you be interested in having a nutritionist help you with your, your food selection? Um, it's, uh, 
actually now I remember it's a uh, there's a uh, there's a new initiative because of nutrition and food insecurity is to help people in the selection of their their food. It's one thing to sit on a lecture or a webinar. It's another thing to walk through the grocery store and see where everything's at. Um, OK. Um, all right. Let's let's. Start. Oh, this is a question for Envy Rides. Do you serve Prince William County? Um, yes, for veterans only right now, but that could change. If you have a partner organization in mind, I'd love to hear from you. Um, right now we have just volunteer Prince William veterans and their and it, wives. And, and it sounds like that all of the programs, all of your programs do a lot in working with partners, which is very important in terms of finding the drivers and the volunteers, as well as sort of administrating that, um, so in the case of the village rides program, I guess right now, is it exclusive to villages or can like if a church group in Montgomery County wanted to partner with you, would they be able to do it? Yes, to uh, answer your question, we're always happy to partner with uh, faith based organizations and um, we we actually will go out and present to the to the church, um, you know, pastor and um, other leaders uh, to explain how the program works. And you know, we we think it's a, a great way to to help a community um, that wants to expand its its outreach um, beyond just the the faith uh, service that they provide. Um, here's a good question that each of you could comment on from Kathleen. He says, do volunteers drive their own cars? If so, do you have car standards and what about liability for those cars? That's the question we probably all get <laughs> often. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, for us, our volunteers do drive their own vehicles um, and their insurance is primary. And as a volunteer driver, especially in Maryland, there are protections. It's it's really no different if you're driving as a volunteer for our program than if you're driving the soccer carpool and taking someone else's child to practice or taking your neighbor to church. Um, you're covered in the same way under your policy. That being said, Neighbor Ride does have a million dollar umbrella policy. So God forbid something catastrophic happened. We have that additional coverage. Um, the second is that all of our villages um, that is actually a requirement for our partnership. So yes, they do have to have liability insurance to ensure all, all parties are covered. Great. Yeah. And Envy Rides is the theme. We have um, requirement to have your own insurance. We have backup umbrella policy, you drive your own vehicle. There are not specific car standards, but we do note the kind if somebody needs like a folding walker or something, sometimes it makes more sense to get an SUV. Um, so we'll write that in the notes. And one of the things just in terms of our volunteer paperwork, and you guys probably have the same thing, is we do have folks sign off that their car is in good operating order and that seatbelts will be used at all times. Um, yeah. Great. And then, um, okay, uh, Kat, Carolyn Rourke says, what lead time do you request or require for a ride request? We ask for a two business day notification. I can, I can start. We we do a, we have a three day request, um, business day request. Now we do also have office hours on Saturday, so that cuts it down a little bit because back in the day when Saturday didn't count as a business day, um, it made it really hard if you needed a ride at the beginning of the week. Um, we do though allow folks to schedule multiple rides. All of our passengers, individual passengers, can take up to twelve round trip rides a month. So if someone's scheduling for dialysis, they can schedule a month or two out, likewise PT or, or anything that they want to do. They don't, have, they don't have to wait till that three day period and then call. Um, they, can, they can kind of get everything on the calendar all at once. I second that as well. Yeah, all of our villages, um, they, they, some do require a 24 hour lead time at minimum, but Really, everyone is pretty flexible. They can also go ahead and schedule things pretty far out, put it all on the schedule in hopes of uh, securing a volunteer sooner. And, you know, um, 
I, I saw a couple of uh, postings in chat. I'm going to get to chat. I'm trying to go through Q&A first, but I saw a posting regarding a home care provider that um, that went through some training with one of your programs for their their staff and somebody who hired a home care provider to provide transportation for their their mom. Like, do you, do you get many calls from people where they're requesting a ride and you can't support them? You don't have a volunteer, what have you? And do you have other resources that you might direct them to? And if so, do sometimes do you all sort of pay for that um, if you can't match a volunteer to a driver? Um, I, I can take this to start. Um, we we have, depending on the the month, typically about a ninety eight percent ride match um, rate. Um, but we have for us, we found it helpful to have a few policies in place or kind of a heads up policies in place so that, for instance, um, today is Thursday. Well, let's drop back. Let's say it was Monday, and someone had a ride for Tuesday. If we hadn't matched for Wednesday, rather. We hadn't matched it yet. We give them a, just a heads up call. We're still working on your ride, but we want to let you know that we don't have a match yet. So that gives them a little extra time to call the son or daughter if someone's in town, um, just in case like, if it's a really important um, appointment. Uh, and then we always give 24 hours notice if we're not able to match a ride. So you know, if the ride's Wednesday and we haven't matched it by Tuesday at two, we call them and let them know that we haven't matched it. Um, we are actually a member of, in Maryland, or in Howard County rather, a member of an organization called COGS, or the Coalition of Geriatric Services. And for us, we, we will refer folks who don't have other resources to COGS or to the Office on Aging, just because they have such a, such a great, it's just such a great resource in terms of providers in our area, including home care um, providers. Great. Um... Let's see. Uh, Steve, I just wanted to add uh, <laughs> with regard to the Jewish Council for the Aging, we, we um, aside from our mobility transportation through the Village Rides program, we do have uh, a service called Connect a Ride, which helps uh, people who are calling in trying to find a ride throughout Montgomery County, whether they live in the area served by Village Rides uh, partners or not. So. And we also do have the no driver available subsidy component um, for some of our partners who have opted to participate in, in that part. Um, in a nutshell, it is um, in instances when they absolutely have no volunteer driver available, they will reach out to some sort of on-demand transport service. And that could be Uber, Lyft, GoGo, Grandparent. Those are the ones that I know are most popular, at least on our end. And um, just invoice us, invoice us, right? And we give them 50% reimbursement. So that is something that our grant does allow for. That's a real win-win. You're not leaving the folks that are interested in your using your program hanging. So that that's fantastic. Um, but but hey, I, I I bet you most of you have a similar to neighbor rides, a 98% uh, yeah. match. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, okay, age requirements for your programs. Is there an application process? And if so, can a third party apply for a client like a like a home care provider or a uh, subsidized senior living community? Um, how does that all work? Yeah, is there an application process or can I just pick up the phone and get a ride, you know, in 48 hours? Yeah, that varies by partner. So some partners, you need to be a member like a village or you need to be an established client. They might do an intake. Some of them um, just take down some basic information. So it varies quite a bit by where you live and where you're looking to go. Um, so we definitely reach out and we can figure out the, what, what the steps are. Third parties can apply in some cases, but sometimes we need to speak to the person for privacy reasons. So, And uh, um, we had somebody, we were talking about ITN and we were talking about the car donation model, which it was a brilliant uh, idea. But uh, somebody asked, could you expand upon what you said earlier about 
donating a car when you no longer drive for health reasons or other reasons seems like you said you get credits for donated cars. Do any of your organizations have a model like that? We don't have a model like that, although interestingly, we did just start a car donation program. Um, it, 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 it's not on the same model. It's really just more that's a funding mechanism for us that we um, just kicked off about six months ago. Um, so. No, our program does not have have such procedure in place. And we have no credit system either. So okay. it wouldn't be like a bank or anything like the ITN. Yeah, system. and and one of the reasons that ITN did that was she she tried doing free rides and I believe she sort of discovered that hey just a nominal amount that's way below the market for any other ride you know let's say it's five dollars a ride or something like that and then when somebody would donate their car they'd have this two thousand dollar credit and they would utilize that to um uh to fund their rides so uh cool cool program that's let's see um Oh, uh, Kim Carlin, Kim Carlichak, I always pronounce her name in, incorrectly, actually has a couple of good questions. But the first one is, um, how about wheelchair accessibility? Do, do any of your programs pick up people who are in a wheelchair and would need um, either transferring or wheelchair accessible van? We actually have something exciting. We're, we're in the middle of a pilot project. so. The first answer to your question is no. Our volunteer drivers cannot accommodate wheelchairs. They're just driving their personal vehicles. Um, and, and the other reality is many of them are older themselves. So lifting a wheelchair into um, a car could be a challenge depending on who the um, driver is. But we just uh, actually right before the pandemic hit, like right before <laughs> launched something called the Community Connector Project. And that with that, we partner with a local assisted living and memory care community, which um, has an accessible minivan that they were able to obtain through grant funding. And so Neighbor Ride uses our, what we call Ride Match scheduling platform to handle lo logistics. And then Winter Growth Assisted Living and Memory Care provides the transportation. Um, just because we saw that gap, we just, it, it broke our hearts that we weren't able to provide transportation um, for those who are wheelchair bound. And so our hope is that that will expand to other community partners. We'll, we're happy to do the logistics, but different assisted livings or maybe a school that has a van that's sitting in a parking lot between the pickup and drop off time. So we're hopeful that we will be able to provide wider scale, affordable um, wheelchair accessible transportation soon. We're experiencing the same thing. Most of our volunteer drivers are also you know, part of the aging population themselves. And so uh, using their personal vehicles, that is just not uh, uh, something they can accommodate. Now, of course, we do accept folks who are maybe temporarily using some sort of assistive walking device, maybe like crutches, cane, definitely walkers, rollators, if it's easily, you know, foldable and transferable and such. But um, no, no wheelchairs at this time for any of our organizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same with NV rides. We unfortunately can't do wheelchairs. We can do something that the person can fold, like Christina mentioned, like a walker or a cane. Great. And um, uh, Retta answered the, uh, the uh, another question that Kim had regarding villages. So there's some villages that you can join and there's no membership. There's other villages that you join and there may be a membership fee. So Although this is a free service for the village, um, it might cost a, a something to join that village. And Retta said that there are some fees that can be waived or reduced, depends on the volunteer driver organization. And, and I think, I, I know how a lot of these programs work, not just for volunteer drivers. We use a lot, uh, we use the word depends a lot, and I'm not referring to adult briefs, uh, when I say depends, uh, the um, is is that it depends on the situation. And, uh, and these are such uh, new and exciting programs that are serving, trying to serve so many different people. A lot of times it's, is that if there's a program in your in your uh, region, call them and 
as you can kind of hear, they will do whatever they can to support uh, the client or the organization that you're you're trying to serve. Um, let's see. Uh, this is a pretty good one. I like this. And uh, re remember the movie Driving Miss Daisy with Morgan Freeman? Do some drivers find themselves in situations where they're offered employment for pay and compensation on a more continuing basis as a driver for this the senior or disabled person? But I think this is also a great lead in on more friendships that can form, as we know in that movie, Driving Miss Daisy, it's that that driving can oftentimes lead to friendships on both sides of the, the equation. Do you guys have any, um, any comments on that? Absolutely. We have just the stories that come back to us are just, I, I think they, that the connections are just a bigger part of it than the point A to point B, frankly. Um, so we have some um, drivers who will kind of shoot us an email and say, hey, if Mrs. Mrs. Smith um, schedules any rides, just send them my way, I'll take them. Um, or there's someone who they're on the same schedule. We had um, one woman who would go to the gym on a regular basis. She had, she had someone who was kind of helping her through um, some recovery um, exercises or things she had to do. So one of our drivers was like, mm, I really should be working out. And so they kind of developed, a, they were gym buddies. <laughs> um, so we do see that often. Um, or we actually, one of the things that's kind of fun, we had one driver who liked to drive different people every time because he just had so much fun meeting people. Um, so there's, there's some variation in it. I second all of that. And then definitely there's the other side of just setting boundaries and trying to really kind of get some of our volunteers off of the hook. If worst case, they're unable to, or maybe maybe don't want to again, <laughs> and that's okay. You know, maybe they want to try and experience another rider. But um, one of the things that we kind of just encourage is to please redirect them back to that ride request line to formally submit their request. That just kind of enforces the formality of the program. And then we just encourage that they respond, hey, if I can, I will. And that just gets the volunteer off of the hook um, and hopefully smooths, smooths out that conversation uh, with the, the beautiful friendships that do, that do emerge. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, okay, let's, the, the last two questions I have in the question queue, and then I'm going to move to chat because I've seen some really interesting ones over there, but they relate to sort of um, some of your, some of the programs featured today are sort of open-ended. If you want to, you know, if you need a ride to go uh, place a bet at National Harbor, you know, we're gonna get you there. Whereas others could be more restricted to appointments. But uh, Deb Merrimer says, can you, can your volunteers accommodate the frequency of dialysis or chemo radiation appointments? How about patients, well, we already talked about wheelchair bound and then, um, and then another person says, do you offer doctor appointments or grocery store to uh, improve people's quality of life? If, if you can just tell the, the limitations of each of your programs real quick, I think that's something that a lot of people may have missed. I, I can do ours. We offer for all purposes, whether it's medical, which do tend to be half of our rides, um, social, um, shopping, volunteer, et cetera. Um, we go up to 35 miles from an individual's home. So that has meant we've actually taken someone to Arlington National Cemetery from the Columbia area. Um, and uh, so I just forgot the third part uh, of it. So, but yeah, the, any purpose, and we do 356 days a year. So Monday through Friday or Monday rather, Sunday through um, Saturday and daytimes and evenings, it really doesn't matter. As long as we have a volunteer available, we'll do it. Great, and that's neighbor rides in Howard County. Mm -hmm. um, how about village rides and Envy rides? Um, so Envy rides, we have no limitation. It goes by partner, but we'll take any request. It can be anything. Um, we cannot do wheelchairs. We can definitely do dialysis and chemo. We have lots of rides that go to those places currently in our system. And uh, we can accommodate any time of day, any day of the year, as long as there's a volunteer. So, and we can't charge. 
I second everything Emily said. The only thing to just keep in mind is that we are not an emergency service. We are a volunteer transportation service. Great. So. Okay. And this is, here's a really good, uh, I'm going to now start going through the comments, but I love Owen's comment who says, as a driver for the community volunteer transportation company in New Hampshire, uh, for the past two years with passengers masked in the back seat, I'm looking forward to the return to having my rider up front. And, uh, and I think that speaks to Catherine and ITN is, is that, you know, sometimes sitting in the back of a taxi cab or an Uber is not as personal, you know, as being up front with your new friend that you, that well, in all likelihood is a neighbor of yours. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Um, Okay, let's see, there was some other ones here that are good. Um, and, and everybody can see chat, but there's some that are not visible. They're, they're coming to us. Um, and let's see, since many of the volunteers themselves are, are older and might be a little bit more frail, is there, how do you ensure that they're still capable of driving safely? Okay, yeah, and, and remember, we don't we we like to minimize age stigmas here because there's people that can drive very well in their 90s but that is a, a good point is is that there could be a volunteer that's not necessarily that good of a driver is there a way to screen that for us it, with neighbor ride we found that the drivers are really mindful um and so they'll self-select and what we did actually during COVID, that's actually kind of turned into a neat transition is we started delivering food on behalf of the Howard County Food Bank and the Office on Aging and Independence. We just, there was a need because people were homebound, but that's provided a kind of nice transition from, for some of our drivers who are less comfortable driving someone, um, but they're able and comfortable doing a delivery on their own. And then, and then from there, like I said, that they've been really good about just retiring when they feel like it's time. Absolutely the same. Um, and, and, uh, let's see the, um, uh, let's see Vicki Hathaway. You can see she's made some really nice comments in there on safe driving and also from the perspective of being a volunteer driver. Um, but they're okay. So, uh, the, on training, there's a lot of questions about training and the um, and how to appropriately help someone in and out of the car. Do do your drivers? I, I mean, somebody doesn't need to be in a wheelchair, but somebody could have some mobility issues and might need assistance getting in and out of the car. Is there training, whether that be live or on video, that that you share with the um, with the drivers? Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, Village Rides and NV Rides uh, just recently uh, completed a volunteer driver training series of videos, which are accessible on um, our Village Rides webpage on JCA's website. Um, and our address is, uh, uh, we can put that in the chat. Uh, but they, they focus on a variety of different uh, training issues, um, not so much the training that uh, Christina does uh, very uh, often on user-friendly software that we provide, the ride schedule system, but on things such as volunteer uh, driver safety trip tips rather. And we have subject matter experts talking about fall prevention. On another one, we have someone from JCA's um, adult daycare uh, program talking about uh, seniors with cognitive impairment and how to communicate well with them. So there are, there are lots of resources that we have made available. Here is the question. It happened so early on in the conversation. I wanted you, get, you all to address this. Most medical facilities require a family member to pick somebody up after a procedure. Do these rideshare groups qualify to provide a pickup in those situations? I can take this. Just at the beginning, we, we didn't um, do transportation, for instance, for colonoscopies. But what the kind of workaround that we 
developed is that we are happy to provide that transportation as long as someone accompanies the individual. And all of our rides, I, I mentioned earlier, for, for a lot of people pay the modest fees, but our, our fees are always per ride, not per person. So folks can ride along at no additional cost. Like I said, as long as there's someone who can sign sign um, our passenger out, um, we're good with it. That's great. Um, okay, uh, there's been some questions. I, I, again, I'm I'm completely blown away at how our audience has grown uh, geographically, and um, I just want to reference again the the map of volunteer driver programs that is um, on the ctaa.org website, that's the Community Transportation Association of America. And uh, somebody just asked about Baltimore or Philadelphia uh, ride programs. And I've sort of, I sort of scrolled in here on both of these regions. And as you can see, you can click on these little flags and you can learn about all these different programs. And one of the things that's interesting that that you've seen here, at least in this mid-Atlantic region, is, is that there are these programs that affiliate to different groups. And it's it's really just a wonderful network that has been built here just in this region. But as you can see, I think it's been sort of put together nationwide and, and monitored by the uh, CTAA. Um, okay. Um, oh, and, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, just got an interesting question there. I need to sort of decipher that, but I'm also looking at the clock. It's one o'clock. Um, so we are, um, I, I feel like we have really dove into this and but this is a topic that i want to continue in terms of driver safety and you know another great topic is how do you get the keys away from a parent if you feel like they're um a dangerous driver um so i hope this is just the first of many transportation related discussions and i hope that that you all can come back to join us for some of those discussions as well. Um, so just to remind everybody, I'll put everybody's contact uh, in the with the recording. I'll have the chat transcript, the recording. We'll throw this up on a podcast as well so you, somebody can listen to it while they're walking their dog. But I wanna thank you panel members and uh, congratulate you on your wonderful programs. And once again, thank the audience for some absolutely amazing comments and questions to drive this discussion. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. We'll see y'all soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.